Greg and I, and I want to I talk about um, Descartes and how he goes about knowing stuff. Um, so here he is at, at uh, sort of the, he is the fountain of modern ways of knowing, at least modern philosophical ways of knowing. Of course, people in modernity have known things the way they're going to know things. Uh, but, but in terms of how this has trickled down um, in the world of intellectuals, you have Descartes, who one day decides to go into a small little room that's heated and doubt everything he knows and try to rebuild from the ground up. That's the way to talk about it. So people have heard of foundationalism. It's because of this master metaphor. Side note, got to be a literature person, even when you're being a philosophical person, because in the first couple paragraphs of Descartes' first meditation, it is entirely run on this uh, conceit of building. So he's going to demolish and build back up from the foundations. And he says that's how, that's how knowledge really ought to work. Uh, true and certain knowledge is that you, you get rid of everything that doesn't work, that has any uh, uh, dubitable character, and then you rebuild on things that are absolutely certain. Uh, but instead of getting into the technicalities of Descartes, what I want to know about is, um, I want to ask you about the merits and demerits of this way of knowing. And, and particularly, um, what Descartes says, I think it's best to know something by doubting everything, building uncertainty, and doing it by, by myself. Mm -hmm. I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to sit in a room. Um, I'm not going to go outside and, with Wordsworth, look at the trees and know stuff from that. Uh, I'm going to sit by myself. I'm not going to listen to what other people tell me. I'm going to just sit there. Um, so let's, maybe let's start with the merits, actually, because I think we tend to be a little more skeptical of his project there. What, what are some of the good things about sitting in this heated room by yourself? I, I think it, it leaves you with yourself to try to discern what your thoughts really are. There's a mm. lot of, when Descartes is going through the meditation, he does a lot of false starts. He, he, he starts down a path and then he realizes, no, I can't think that. Um, no, that can't be true. And then he has to back up and he does a new start. Mm. So there's, there's this returning back to the self that happens over and over again. Um, and that helps you to clarify what you do think, mm -hmm. actually, which mm -hmm. turns out might not be very much. Right. <laughs> right. Um, I, I know I've experienced that myself. Yeah, so when yeah. I try to think about what I am actually thinking and get rid of all the parroting mm -hmm. of other people mm -hmm. and get rid of all the things I tell myself or things that I can get from lines in movies yeah. and get down to, well, what do I think here? That's actually a really helpful project, not only for, for knowing myself, but for s trying to see much more clearly in an unfettered way. So I, I do value that sort of hard focus, get down, drill down, um, and, tr and try to get just a little bit of a sense of, if I had to say one sentence about this right now, mm -hmm. and that sentence wasn't a cl cliche, and, and it wasn't just what came out of my mouth the first time I proposed it to myself, but was something that, that was on the back of a kind of seasoned reflection, well, that's hard to do with someone else, because we so want to please when we talk to someone else. We so want that, that responsive affirmation. We want to come to a place together. That's valuable too, but sometimes, um, especially when you're younger, that can take over you even owning your own thought. Mm. So being by yourself We also want to one, one up when we're with someone totally. else. And so the nice thing there is that there's, you know, I don't um, dash off a bit of wit Mm -hmm. um, and thereby I think I've come to a, a, a new idea. Yeah. But I'm stuck with myself. And, and I like even just this sense of, the way it allows for long-form thought. Um, if, I'm, if it's just me, and if I'm staying on a topic, um, there aren't the distractions of conversation either. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. but l let me maybe add a hazard to it. So yeah. of course, there's a, there's a long tradition of uh, uh, encouragement for introspection, mm -hmm. self-examination, which I think sometimes, I mean, that's, that's ancient Greek and Roman philosophy brought uh, into the Christian tradition clearly by Augustine and his confessions. Mm -hmm. But Augustine himself even says, like, the result of one's own disorder is disorder. Yeah. So there, you're going to, even in an intellectual project, you're still going to encounter that self that's in there as well. Mm -hmm. And the ways that the self is going to prevent you from really being able to just be purely academic and in your head. And, and the issue there is what do you encounter when you lock yourself in a room mm -hmm. and there's kind of no one to reflect back to you? That sounds like more of you or something like that, as opposed to maybe just intellectual truth that you're getting at. Mm -hmm. It's a venerable tradition, but, but a hazard nonetheless. Yeah, Greg, will you tie this in? Because I'm, I'm hearing um, distant echoes here of the Desert Fathers. Um, so they also decided to go to a lonely place um, <laughs> to 
think by themselves or something like that. It was naturally heated. It right. wasn't a furnace. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, can you talk a little bit about the way they went about knowing in the desert? Because there's, there is this profound yeah, yeah. superficial similarity yeah, in the there solitude. There is. There is. Uh, they went off to the desert to be alone, but that aloneness is actually more of a fiction than a reality. I mean, the, the, the desert became a city, Athanasius says. Mm -hmm. So uh, Anthony kept running away. I mean, well, he, Anthony he went kept, to the inner mountain because he, went, he was he like, went, the city is Yeah, but he crazy. went to the inner mountain, but he, uh, I mean, he, he spent 40 years in the outer mountain, uh, but the, the point was alone, we're told. But when he actually went to the inner mountain, he made constant contact back with the world to offer spiritual direction and guidance to people. So he actually didn't retreat alone. And I would say the desert tradition, apart from Anthony, is one of where you go and you, you have your Abba. Or even more importantly, if it's not that person, there's a strong tradition where it's like, go to your cell. It will teach you all that you know. Now that's, that's cryptic. I don't even know what that means necessarily, but there is a sense of where place will teach you too. Uh, and, and we could think of that as a kind of you're alone, but not not alone alone. But there, if, I, if I'm the card, I'm saying, great, I went to my cell <laughs> and it taught me all I needed to know. That, that's true, but the hazard even in the desert and for Descartes is still the fact that, okay, now go and reflect that with, on the, with someone. Okay, right. so, you, so you be Descartes' Abba for a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. What, what, do you, what do you say to him about his approach to knowing? And, and speak like an yeah. Abba. I mean, speak, speak oh. like the... <laughs> yeah. Well, probably I would simply say to him that... that you, you know and you came to knowledge, but it's not sufficient knowledge. It's, it, it, it can't be, I don't know, locked down, uh, to use a platonic term. It, it can't be fixed until it's, it's been, uh, I think, discussed in some sort of a community. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, I would, as an Abba, I would say, Descartes, the same way in which you and I discuss these things for this very purpose is the same reason I go have a discussion with my own Abba. Mm -hmm. um, so actually you're part of a bigger community. It's not just your cell and one person. It's your cell, me, indirectly the person I'm having conversation with, the person they're having conversation I, with. I, I don't even know what to do with this, but um, boy, it, it's, it's, I mean, partly because of the nature of the church in America these days, there have been so many power abuses. Mm -hmm. um, and that always lingers. I mean, I, I, I love, Greg, what you're saying about the relationship with an Abba who's trusted. Um, there's a little bit of the sort of low church Protestant in me that says, Whoa, power abuse. <laughs> and it says, wait, so I'm supposed to seek knowledge. Okay, not by myself, I get it, but by radically submitting to one person who could be a total power monger. Um, I, don't, I, yeah, I don't know what to do with it. I guess there's just a, there's a little yeah. bit of lingering worry there. Hmm. I, it's only in the isolation of the single figure, I think, that it becomes so. more worrying. Mm -hmm. um, and, and when that figure has not been sort of like overseen and trained <laughs> right. and has all the mechanisms of, of protection that you would, you would want. Um, the, the mistake, I think, in reading Descartes is to think that this fiction that he is proposing precisely as a fiction is a way of life. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Um, he, he is more than aware of the people he is going to respond to mm -hmm. when he dries the ink on that period of the last page of the sixth meditation. And mm -hmm. um, we have all those replies and objections. He's anticipated many of them in he advance. Yeah, he's he says from the, the beginning, Sorbonne. yeah, he says from the beginning he's collating the best and reorganizing them to make them as sure and clear as possible for a certain kind of reader. So he, he, he hedges his project um, a lot and his project is social. His project is social. No matter how alone he is, mm -hmm. his thinking is still social. And I, I think the danger in reading Descartes is to is to not catch that, not to not to pick up on the fact mm -hmm. that he is still thinking in community, and he's still responsible to a community. He's not really off by himself making up you know castles in the air. Yeah, yeah. Um, he really is heavily invested yeah. in a learned yeah. community, an international community that he knows will read it, that he wants to read it, and he wants to respond. Yeah. Um, the danger with us going to our own closets by ourselves is to think that we don't need that, that we're not using it, that we'll, even when we think our best thoughts, we're not relying on it, yeah. that community of thinkers that we've already been grown in, um, such that even when you're speaking with an authority like an Abba figure, you're never speaking only to him, and he's never just speaking to you. You are speaking already in a mutually responsive community of thinkers and speakers into life and into truth. Yeah. So there's th that aloneness is, on the one hand, there's a, there's a spiritual truth about that kind of solitude, yeah. that, that we are ultimately all alone yeah. before God. Um, but there's a 
human falseness if we take it too far to thinking that, that I can be by myself, even in my thoughts left to myself. Well, there's, uh, yeah, there's also, uh, in, in closing, I mean, I even for someone like Augustine, who has, again, superficial similarities at times to Descartes, um, even he, what, what he finds out at the end of the day, that his aloneness uh, is with a God, is before a God who is closer to him than mm -hmm. he is to himself, and therefore can call himself into question. And so there's this profound, if unique, sociality even at the core of himself, um, mm -hmm. which, which kind of gives the lie to, the, to Descartes' sense that he's truly alone. I mean, he, he believes in God, confesses God, um, but uh, I think it doesn't see the problematic that even God's cl being closer to me than I am to myself mm -hmm. uh, really presents to his project. The Tory Honors Institute at Biola University Biblically centered, great books, liberal education. More at biola.edu slash Tory.